Okay. Welcome to lesson 5.7. This is percent ratios and rates being continued. And we're going to be doing some comparing of ratios in this lesson. In the objectives of this lesson, you're going to use different strategies to compare ratios. Now, the advantage of different strategies is it can sometimes help you to come up with the, the answers your own way. However, sometimes it's not as helpful as one would think. So I want to go and do two questions two different ways, and you'll be able to choose which one you think is a, actually easier to work with. So the following is a typical concentration problem, one of the more common ones used in ratios. The idea is to work out the ratio to find out which one is more concentrated or less concentrated and to know why. So you take a look at the two things. This is from page 200 and 279 in your textbook. Recipe A calls for the punch, and it has got two cups of concentrate right there, and it's got three cups of water. Recipe B has three cups of concentrate and four cups of water. So two to three versus three to four. Now, at a glance, you may be able to tell. However, you're going to have to provide proof, so let's go to the next question. You've got recipe A, which was two to three, and we have recipe B, which was three to four. What we're going to do is we're going to convert each one of these into a percentage to find out how much concentrate, percentage-wise, is, is being used here. Now, it's not the total percentage of concentrate in the actual uh, the punch. It's actually the percentage ratio. So we're not going to worry about two to five. We're just going to go two divided by three, and that's equal to 0 0.6 repeating, and 0 0.6 repeating times 100 is 66.66666. So I'm going to round it to 67%. Convert the ratio is 2 over 3, convert it into a decimal, and then take the decimal and convert it into a percent. So the ratio of concentrate to water here is 67%. Now, this one here, 3 over 4, gives us 3 divided by 4, which is 0 0.75. And of course, 0 0.75 times 100 gives us 75%. So, in the first one, 67% was concentrate. Uh, in, the in, the in, the, the, in the second one, the ratio was 75%. So, taking a look at these two, recipe B has the higher ratio higher percentage of concentrate, which is 75%. What about the coffee example at the bottom of the page? So here's a different one. Now, this is a different strategy. Now, the different strategy here is they're going to draw diagrams now. So it says here on the left, Erica makes her coffee with two scoops of coffee and five cups of water. Jim makes his with three cups or three scoops of coffee to seven cups of water. So we want to know what's the concentration here. So the concentration, they're doing it by pictures. So we're dividing up uh, for every two cups of water, how much do, does um, each one of these people use uh, for one scoop of coffee? So if you take a look at Erica's, when you divide one scoop up, it works out to be um, this whole cup, this whole cup, and half of this one. So kind of like this is the part that you got there, and she draws that right there. The other two and a half are here. So the ratio of coffee to water is basically one scoop to two and a half cups of water. Now take a look at Jim's. Jim's is the same type of thing, but you have one of these has to be divided into thirds. Right? So what happens here is we have two, and there's a third there. We have another two, and this third here. And then the middle third right here goes with these two right here. So the ratio is one scoop for every two and a third cups. So now what you have to do is decide which is got more coffee to water. And if you take a look at this, this has basically got less water, sorry, more water than this one does. So that means that this one here is basically the stronger coffee. Okay. Now, that problem it's a problem. I don't know about you, but drawing stuff like that causes me some issues. So let's take a look at this as I would prefer you to do it. Let's make up a ratio of coffee to water. Now, Erica uses 2 to 5. Jim uses 3 to 7. 
So let's find them in percentages. So we have 2 over 5, treat this as a fraction, part to whole. So we have 2 divided by 5, even though it is part to part, we're going to use it as part to whole. Um, 2 divided by 5 is 0 0.4, and 0 0.4 times 100 means that she has a 40% concentration. Over here, 3 to 7, 3 divided by 7 is equal to 0 0.42857. And of course, 0 0.4285 times 100. And I'm going to round this to the nearest percent. It means it's 43%. So the decimal would have moved to here. And there's my cutoff. The 8 causes the 3 to go up. So Jim's got 43% coffee. And Erica has got 40% coffee. So Jim's coffee is more concentrated. OK, Bob's making a very, making a large amount of Kool-Aid for a camp picnic. The recipe calls for one scoop of powder for every 1.4 liters of water. Bob's cooler will hold 23 liters. How much powder should he use? Now this is a ratio with an unknown amount in it. So what you want to do is put down the ratio that you know. This is not a concentration question. This is a different type of a question. All right. You will encounter concentration questions, but you also can encounter problems like this. So the recipe calls for one scoop of powder for every 1.4 liters. All right. And we need to make sure that that ratio is kept the same. So Bob, the cooler, holds 23 liters. We need to know how much powder will he use. OK, now we've done this in the last lesson. So what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to solve this question. All right, so <clears throat> the easiest way to do it is treat it like equivalent fractions. Okay. Remember, this is your x here, so multiply both sides by 23, the number under the variable. The x over 23, when you multiply it by 23, this is in the numerator, this is in the denominator, they become 23 over 23, which is 1, and 1x is simply x. And of course, for 1 over 1.4, 1, 1. you divide that out, multiply the answer by 2, by 23, sorry, and that gives you 16.43 scoops. Now, obviously, you're not going to measure 0.43 of a scoop. You'll probably probably throw in 16 and a half scoops, depending on the size of the scoop. All right? So you should have a problem here. So, oh, sorry, a sentence here. So Bob should use 16.43 scoops of Kool-Aid. Let's go to the next question. Here's another one, a little bit different again. We're trying to get you introductions to all the different types of questions you're going to encounter on your, on your assignment. So Bob is fertilizing his, gar his garden with fertilizer that recommends that he should use 35 grams of fertilizer for every 5 meters squared. His garden has a is a rectangle, 22 by 20. And these are in meters. If he, spread three, if he spread three kilograms of fertilizer, did he use too little, the right amount, or too much? Well, the first thing you need to know is that it recommends 35 grams of fertilizer for every five meters squared. Now, this is an area. Note the meter squared. So that means that I have to find the area of Bob's garden first. So remember, area of a rectangle is length times width. So your area is going to be 22 times 20, that means that your area is going to be 440 square meters. Square meters. Okay. Now, we can set up our ratio to find out whether or not we've done this correctly. He needs to spread, spread it says here, 35 grams for every 5 meters squared. And we have to keep that equal to our unknown to 440 meters squared. Okay, so here's our two things, our two uh, ratios, turn them into fractions. We've got 35 over 5 equal to the box or the x over 440. Now multiply both sides by 440. So 35 over 5 times 440 is equal to x over 440 times 440. These cancel. So that means that 35 times 5 um, 
and times, sorry, 35 divided by 5 times 440 is 3080 grams, and that is what our X is. Now, if we take a look at this, you have to be very careful, because Bob spread 35 kilograms, 3, kilo, three kilograms here. He's supposed to spread 3,080 grams, so we have to do a unit change here. There are 1,000 grams in a kilogram. So to convert this out, you're going to have to take the 3080 and divide it by 1,000, and you will find that Bob used 3.08 kilograms on his lawn. So the question says, here he used 3.08 kilograms of fertilizer. He uses too little. Right? He should have used 3.08. But let's take a look at this for a second. 3.08 kilograms of fertilizer. Remember that we're talking about 80 gram difference here. Now remember, 80 grams is not much. I mean, you can, a gram is the size of a, um, a large paper clip. So you get an idea of just how much he he actually uh, didn't use. He's short by 80. That's not significant. Okay. So is this a significant amount? Too much? No. Okay. I actually should say it's. It says here he used too little. I guess it's supposed to be T O O. Is this a significant amount? Too little? Forgot to change this one. And the answer is no. 80 grams is not significant. Not in this situation. All right, so that's the end of this lesson. I've given you examples of almost all the types of problems you can encounter in your in your page 283. So go over it again if you don't understand. Make sure you know how. And if you're having any trouble, make sure you take a look at the, coming in and see me. I'm always here to help.